In this lecture, I'd like to really quickly talk about the concept of center of charge, where it's used, why it's used, and how it's used. Now, analogous to center of mass, center of charge is the point where our charge originates. So if we look at two spheres, one with constant or uniform mass density, and a second one with uniform charge density, we see that our center of mass for this guy is the point smack in the middle. It's the center of our circle, of our sphere. Now likewise, the center of charge of this uniform charged sphere is the point smack in the middle. It's a point. It's the center of the circle. Now note what a point is. A point has no dimensions. A point has no volume, has no area, has no circumference, has no diameter, and has no radius. That means our radius of our, of our point is zero. Now that's important to understand because a point is not a circle. It's not a sphere. So, once again, Assuming uniform charge distribution, uniform charge density of our sphere, the origin of charge for our sphere is the center of that sphere. It's a point at the center of our sphere. Now let's look at the following. Where is this charge, center of charge used and why it's important? Well, if the distance between any two charges is much larger than the size of those two charges, we can assume that our spheres are point charges. In other words, if this was a charge of some charge Q1, and this was a second charge with some charge Q2, and they were relatively far apart, the distance between them was much larger than the radius of any two spheres. <coughs> that means we can approximate these guys to be point charges. So we shrink these guys to a point. So that means they no longer have volume, they no, no longer have radii, and they no longer have any diameter. What they do still have are the charges. They still have the same charge amount, charge magnitude. So once again, if we go back to Coulomb's law, which basically gives us the force that each charge exerts on the other charge, we can say the following that our two charges, say charge Q1 and charge Q2, if these guys are very far apart, much further apart than the distance or the size of those two charges, we can shrink those two charges to point charges and we can simply plug in our values into our equation and find our value. In other words, these approximations work for when we're dealing with atoms. If we're approximating the force with which our proton is pulling on our electron or the force with which our electron is pulling on our proton because the distance between our electron and proton is so far is much farther than the radii of either spheres of either the electron or the proton we can assume that our electron and proton are point charges and that means their volume and radii and diameter are all zero, but they still have that same quantized amount of charge.